Hello, good people. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you and yours. And welcome back to yet another episode of the God Pulse podcast. If this is your first time listening in, thank you. <laughs> My name is Polello, and I'm your host. And if you have been listening, thank you again for returning, and thank you again for allowing me into your space um, as we converse together today. So today. Um, we're going to be chatting about something that's um, quite uncomfortable to talk about, um, and that's uh, the topic of lust. And so um, I found it necessary to bring this up because, um, one, I have dealt with lust in my life, and I am still dealing with it. Um, I cannot believe for the life of me that I am still dealing with this thing, but I am. And so... um, that's reason number one. And reason number two is because I'm not the only one dealing with lust or the results of lust or sexual sin or just sexual sin in, it, in and of itself. Um, and I know that it can be very sensitive and um, really hard to talk about. Um, but I do hope that you find this worthwhile and I hope that I hope that you and I can have an honest conversation about this. So um, before I even get into anything, right, so um, I don't know your background. You know, I don't really know what you're about, what you do, what you believe in. For the most part, I really don't. And so I think before we get into anything, I think it's very important for us to kind of um, understand what lust is. So, um, I mean, if you do a general Google search and you like try to find out like, what is lust? Um, It'll tell you that um, this is something I got from Oxford Languages. And it says that lust is a strong sexual desire or having a strong sexual desire for someone. Um, other um, definitions go on to say that it is an intense sexual desire or appetite, um, or an uncontrolled or illicit sexual desire or appetite. Um, and it uses the word um, it uses the word lecherousness. And um, another definition it goes on to kind of break it down. It says it is a passionate or overwhelming desire or craving. So if you think about that. Um, those kind of sum up what lust is. And um, I think it'll make sense um, as we go into it. So, yeah. So um, I'd like to share uh, my my story with you. And um, kind of, I didn't just arrive at feeling or being lustful. It wasn't just wake up and suddenly having all these thoughts and all these images replaying in my mind and this certain desire just sitting in my heart out of nowhere. It started somewhere. And so with me, um, how it all started is with pornography. So um, I know that this is a common story. So with me, I was about age 10 or 11. I remember I remember it like it was yesterday. I was in my room and I liked to watch movies late at night, right? So I had a little TV in my room. And um, whenever I couldn't necessarily sleep, I'd just switch the TV on and see what's playing. And so um, I remember this... Um, particular night, um, a movie on ETV, right? I was watching this movie. It was a great movie. And um, I don't know if anyone else was awake at that point, but, you know, I was. And I'm watching this movie and it's great and it ends. And then I remember there was that whole Lotto Powerball vibe going on after that as per the norm. And then after, and then there was something else that came on TV. <laughs> um... I remember seeing just something I've never seen before, right? And the thing is, even though I wasn't aware of the fact that it was pornography, yeah, I didn't know it had a name, I could tell that these are two grown people doing stuff that I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to be doing. And at that point, I know it's wrong, so I turned the TV down, but my curiosity is peaked. I want to see what's going on. And so at that point, I had my very first encounter with pornography and um, I kept on. And so because, you know, um, I feel feel like children are quite smart because, I mean, I figure if it plays at this time um, on this particular channel, I probably will be able to catch it again. Right. And so it it became a thing where I was intentional about catching this particular movie or these kinds of movies on ETV at this certain time. And no one knew and so um then I started watching porn regularly and I watched it not necessarily understanding it but knowing what it was and knowing that it wasn't okay but I started watching it more and more 
I watched it and it was a hidden secret. No one knew. I never told a single soul, never told a friend. I never told a cousin. I told nobody. Um, and that led to me being addicted to pornography at a very young age. I was still in primary and I remember I could not not watch it, you know, and I'd always try to find new ways of watching it and it just, it started to breed certain cravings in me that at that point I didn't realize were even there, you know, because I genuinely was still a child. Um, but this went on for years. This went on for years. Um, from primary school, going into high school, I kept on watching pornography and um, kept feeding myself with these images. And um, this is my first encounter with what sex is, you know, um, what sex looks like. Um, what sex sounds like, what it was such a perverted nature of what this thing is, but I had no idea of that because it was me being exposed to it for the very first time in my life. And then I remember around age 15, age 15, I lost my virginity. And how it happened was really weird because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I just, it kind of just happened, right? And um, the guy was much older than I was, but um, I found myself losing my virginity at age 15. And I think that's actually where it all began because even though I had been watching porn all these years and having all these images in my head and having this idea of what sex is or what it's supposed to be, I was now actually partaking in the act itself without any real understanding of it and... When I say any real understanding of it, um, when I was 15, I was pretty much still a kid in my thinking and my reasonings. And when it came to sex, um, I didn't really even have the kind of feelings I thought that I was supposed to have or that my friends had at that point. And so after I lost my virginity at 15, I started becoming hypersexual. And so I was, I was someone who loved to date and I, I loved to get all this attention from these boys because they were feeding something inside of me that at the time I wasn't aware of but as time went by and as I grew um, and as I came to actually surrender my life to the Lord I actually realized what it was they were feeding and they were they were feeding the seed or this little plant that was growing from a seed of of lust that had been planted by pornography and that was being fed by sex as a kid and so getting all this attention because of my body and um, the things that I could do for them sexually was something that I quite enjoyed and I want you to understand that that is not a good thing. I want you to understand that there is a lot of brokenness, a lot of just being lost that was happening at that point. But I obviously wasn't aware of it. And um, I just remember just, um, and I, I remember mentioning this in one of the previous episodes that for me, high school felt like, I felt as though I was just a candle in the a candle in the wind and I was just floating about and I had no real sense of myself and this applies exactly here. And I was just kind of floating. And so um, this was my life, you know, right until age solid 18, 19. And I think from um, age 19, I started to become more reserved and um, I wasn't as um, sexually active as I, as I was before. Um, I did not enjoy dating as frequently as I did before as um, uh, a younger teen. But that did not mean that the lust went away. Just because I was growing and becoming a little more reserved, that did nothing for it. It was still there. And um, the thing about lust is that it, it wears many faces. And sometimes you won't be able to see it as exactly what it is and I know um, as a, a teenager because I'd been so hypersexual things like self-pleasing was so naturally felt like very normal part of life for me and um, as I grew up that was still the case 
I remember though around age 19, age 20, I was starting to realize that I have a problem, that this pornography was taking over my life, that it was taking over my mind, that it was stripping the joy away from general conversations and interactions I had with people that I cared about, people that I'd meet. Um, and I felt as though I was its slave and it was my master. And I realized that I didn't want this life anymore. Especially because I felt as though I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop watching it. And um, there was just a breaking point in my life where I just couldn't. I just couldn't continue on that path anymore. It was breaking me. And because I knew of God, because I wanted God, it was just, it was just not working. I remember praying a lot about it. I remember praying a lot about it. I remember trying with all of my own strength to just resist it. And I try by all means just not watch it. And um, as time went by, I just, I just didn't want it anymore. It was only by God's grace that I got to a point where I just, I just didn't interact with it anymore. I didn't want it anymore. I didn't have any desire for this thing that had raised me in terms of um, how I perceived sex and sexuality and being a woman who is aware of herself sexually. It, I just didn't want it anymore. I didn't want that for myself anymore. The painful thing, though, about what pornography breeds in your life and just about the whole realm of um, perverted sex, you know, um, is that you think that just because I don't necessarily have the appetite for this aspect that immediately everything is cancelled out. And... Um, because I didn't see a problem with the fact that I was sexual and the fact that I was lustful and the fact that, um, you know, I loved men and um, I loved interacting with them in that way. I didn't think that, I didn't see that as a problematic thing. Even after I stopped watching porn and interacting with it, I was still this person who was, um, whose life was clearly the evidence of this thing, this seed of, of lust. The painful thing about um, living that kind of life, um, especially when you are a child of God and um, you, really wanna, you really wanna get to know God, you really wanna understand what this whole Christianity thing is. Um, the painful thing is that um, lust and um, just sexual immorality sexual immorality, it'll have you feeling as, as though you can't bring this particular thing that you are struggling with before God. It makes you feel so ashamed, especially because it thrives in secrecy. It makes you feel as though God is ashamed of you. God wants nothing to do with you. God is not willing to help you. It makes you feel as though you are this dirty thing that you are just the scum of the earth, that you don't deserve God's love, you don't deserve his grace, you don't deserve his mercy, that he's not going to give it to you because of that. And I'm not, I'm not saying that we are so entitled to, to all these things that God gives to us as, as gifts, but because we are his children, he gives them to us willingly because he loves us. And what this life, what this, this painful sin makes you believe is that he cancels you out at that point that he doesn't recognize you anymore. I think getting to a point where I was praying about God to help me deal with um, pornography and lust, it wasn't necessarily easy because for the longest time I'd been so quiet. I'd been so silent. I couldn't tell a single soul. And I felt as though God was the last person I could ever tell about it, even though he's all-knowing <laughs> and um, he's omnipresent, omnipotent, omnificent. He, he's all-powerful. He knows what's going on. He sees everything all the time. I felt like I couldn't tell him. I felt like he was ashamed of me. I felt, I felt like he was ashamed of me. I think after having just generally outgrown and by the grace of God, just 
lost the appetite for pornography. I continued on. I lived my life and um, I continued on. I continued on with sexual sin. Mm. 